everyone, welcome back to another Stitches and Scribbles video. Um, I noticed that a lot of other crafting YouTubers kind of do like updates or podcast type videos, so I figured I would try doing kind of a monthly updates um, just of what crafts I'm working on, other stuff I'm doing, upcoming tutorials, basically whatever's going on right now, so I thought I'd go ahead and get started. The first thing that I am currently working on, which will be a tutorial, is a kimono style summer sweater. And I'm using the Hobie Rainbow yarn, which is their 8-4 cotton yarn that comes in a bunch of colors. They actually have kits on their website. Well, not kits, but um, bags of yarn that come in sets of colors. So I got one that was all of the like teals and blue shades. There's another one that's shades of pink. There's a shades of purple one. There's some that just come in rainbow colors. I also got a rainbow pastel one for my um, crochet face masks tutorial that I released a few weeks ago when this comes out. Um, so far I really like the pattern and I'm actually really impressed with the Hobie yarn to the point of where I'm considering another order just for this cotton yarn, especially if we end up needing face masks longer term. Um, it would be nice to have the materials to make quite a few more. The other craft that I actually worked on recently was, let me grab it, I got out my painting supplies for the first time in probably a couple of years. Um, I've used my acrylic paints to do some other craft projects with friends or things for my classroom in case you didn't know. I don't think I've mentioned it in a video yet, um, but I am a teacher, so occasionally that'll probably come up in these update type videos. Um, but I am a teacher, so I use paint sometimes for things in my classroom, but I haven't like painted in a really long time. So I actually painted two canvases between yesterday and this morning. Um, and while they weren't perfect, I did videotape them. So the process of painting both of these should be on my channel pretty soon. Or within the next couple months, I kind of schedule everything so that everything comes out on a Friday. So that I can kind of work ahead and get a couple videos filmed a week, but have content scheduled for a few weeks after that so if I have a week where I can't really video or can't really upload anything um, there's still like a stock of videos so that whoever's watching still gets a video a week but one of the things that I worked on was this painting which my kitchen is all lemons and kind of everything is yellow and a little bit of green shades and then all of my um, pots and pans and some of the decorations are all in copper so I did a painting to hang on the wall. I wanted it to kind of cover this really ugly old socket that's on there that's not being used. I think it might have been for a phone cord or something like that um, but I don't think this type of canvas is going to work because these canvases are the flat ones not the ones that have like the empty space behind them so I'll still hang it in there um, but probably will still be on the hunt for something to put in that spot to cover the socket. The other one I did is actually for my guest room in my apartment, which also serves as my office. So I kind of keep everything in that room like very clean colors. So it's a lot of white with a dark emerald green and shades of gray. But I also have a really pretty painting that a family friend did for me that's all abstract shades of blue and green and white kind of almost in a splatter paint design but not quite it's a lot more intentional than that so I wanted to kind of mess around with my paint to create a piece that could coordinate with it and possibly go um, near it on the wall to kind of to create a painting wall of sorts that was a really bad way of explaining it but like those people who take walls and put like a bunch of art pieces or a bunch of photographs all in the same place and like lay them out nicely. I wanted to do that but keep my color theme all together using the painting that she did as kind of a centerpiece. But I've also been really into like the Pinteresty thing of quotes on paintings and stuff like that. So this is the piece that I created. I have always really loved the keep calm and carry on slogan so since this is also my office and my crafting room 
I changed it so it says keep calm and carry on crafting. I did do all of this with a brush. I kind of wanted to get my Cricut out and stencil the letters, but I was too impatient for that and didn't really want to order more vinyl to do sticker letters. And I wasn't quite at the point where I figured out how to do a stencil version yet because I knew that like the middles of A's and O's would get really weird with a stencil. Um, so I just decided to hand letter it and I used the width of the brush to kind of dictate how thick my letters were. Luckily the font for the actual logo is pretty easy. They're just straight letters. There's nothing fancy about it. So I was kind of proud of how close it looks to like the normal font that the Keep Calm and Carry On signs are in. I mean this is obviously hand painted. The like one C is way bigger than the other one. And the bottom is obviously hand lettered, but I really liked the process of how I did the background of this piece, which is why I left it for like 24 hours before putting the letters over it because I was really afraid of messing up because then it would mess up the background that I had worked so hard on. Um, yeah, so that's the painting that I've done. I did turn both of these into a video, so you should see those sometime soon just kind of not so much as a tutorial but just as like a kind of fun video. I've seen a lot of videos I think that they're all coming from TikTok of people like painting things with like no voiceover it's just music so I kind of wanted to create something like that without actually having to join TikTok because I'm avoiding that like the plague. A lot of the other teachers at my school caved and joined and not gonna lie, I've been thinking about it, but I think we're still a ways off. I haven't reached that point of quarantine boredom yet, so like, I think we're good. I think the moment I know that I like fail the quarantine will be the moment that I join TikTok. So, holding off on TikTok, but still wanted to do kind of the like TikTok style painting video and just put it on YouTube, because I know that that's been a thing for a while before TikTok, so anyway painting videos coming soon. Um, another thing that I actually did a lot before quarantine but since quarantine started it's like I haven't had the amount of focus needed to do it is I do actually read a lot. I My goal is always to read a hundred books a year and I thought that I would like burn through books while on quarantine and then I didn't. I think because by the time I was going to bed, I was so, like, distracted and not focused that, like, I could only read for, like, 10 or 15 minutes before switching over to, like, watching videos or, like, texting somebody or something else. I was really struggling with staying focused through a book, so even the ones I was reading, I realized I didn't remember most of the plot line as I was going. So I kind of switched up my routine and started reading as my work break instead of using like YouTube as my work break in between lesson plans. Um, and that seems to have helped so far. I got through the book that I was working on, which was Marie Lu's Warcross. And honestly, I need to add that book immediately to my reread list because... I don't really think I gave it a fair shot because I was so distracted, but it's also really similar to another book that I absolutely love. So the whole time I was reading, I kept comparing it to the other book, which is Blue Screen, and I'm not remembering the author's name off the top of my head at the moment. I'll have to look it up and like insert it here somewhere. Um, but I love the book Blue Screen. I listened to Blue Screen and its sequel as audiobooks and then like couldn't wait for the third audiobook. I had to like read the third book that second that I finished the second one. So I ended up buying all three as used books online. But anyway, Marie Lu's book I could tell was a book that I would have loved but because I was so distracted while I was reading it I was missing plot points, I didn't really know what was going on, but like I know it's a book that I would like if it had gotten like a fair chance. So that is immediately going on my list of books that I want to reread someday. But once I finished that one, I kind of like let myself have a break from reading, didn't pick anything up, 
but I was really lucky that a friend and I had actually done a book swap right when quarantine started. And I'm filming this like at the tail end of May. So obviously like I didn't touch the book she gave me for a really long time because we swapped them like the weekend that um, the Safer at Home order was announced in my state, which was like March 17th. Um, we both put together bags of books that we thought that the other one would like and we swapped them. And I haven't touched the bag of books she gave me until actually this morning. And the book series that she gave me, she actually just gave me one series. She didn't give me like a bunch of, like I gave her a variety of books or like the first book of a bunch of series I thought she would like and then said like, let me know which ones you do like and I can, um, you can swap them out for the rest of the series. She just gave me one series and she <laughs> said that she did this because I read so fast. She wanted to see how long it would take me to finish the whole series, but then I obviously didn't get to it until now. But the series she gave me is all by Tamora Pierce and I'm forgetting the name of like the full series together, but it's broken up into like, I think four or five different like, not mini series, but all of the book series take place in the same universe kind of deal. So this particular series is called The Song of the Lioness, which I had actually never heard of. I've heard the name Tamora Pierce before, and I know that she writes like a lot of fantasy books, and I know I've seen her name before, but like up till now couldn't tell you what books she had written kind of thing. Um, so this is the first book in the series, and I'm already loving it from the perspective of why did nobody tell me about these books when I was 11 years old because this is so far is like the perfect book for a kid who's like finished Narnia, finished Lord of the Rings and um or finished Harry Potter and needs something else in that fantasy realm that's still age appropriate. I loved fantasy as a kid. I struggle to read adult fantasy because a lot of times it's very, um, has a, like very in-depth world building in it and I, without like a list of characters, I get lost. So like, I, I mean, I couldn't read Game of Thrones for a lot of reasons, mostly just because it's Game of Thrones and it was not, like, I wanted fantasy content, not fantasy content that is riddled with scenes that I want to skip through. Um, but Game of Thrones also, as a book, just had too many things going on for me. I almost would have liked a series like that better if each character had their own book instead of all of the storylines being interspersed. But that's just me. Anyway, this book so far would be like perfect. It's perfect kid fantasy. And b just based off the cover art of the other books, it looks like the series, like, ages up with the different series titles. Um, but this one seems very much, like, geared towards the age group that would read, like, Narnia or the first couple Harry Potter books. So it's about a girl named Alana, who is a twin. And Alana and her twin, Tom, are both supposed to start, like, basically apprenticeships in their given field. So Alana is supposed to go to the convent to learn magic and Tom is supposed to go to the castle to learn how to be a knight. And neither of them are interested in those professions that have been chosen for them or that they are supposed to do. That So far the series hasn't said if like they're like all boys and girls are supposed to do that or if it's just them for whatever reason. But they decide to swap so they forge a letter saying that even though they're twins, they're actually twin boys. So Tom goes to the convent to learn how to be a sorcerer. So changes the name of the like program, for lack of better words, that he's in so that he can become a sorcerer at the convent. And Alana changes her name to Alan and disguises herself as a boy to learn how to be a knight. And so far, like, it's definitely like... As far as text level, I would say very close to the text level that Narnia is as far as difficulty. So I'm like breezing through it. I started it this morning and I'm already more than 100 pages in, or 100 exactly. And that took me like less than a half an hour. But I also 
like at top speed can read 200 pages an hour, so that may just be me. But anyway, so far I highly recommend it. Maybe if I keep doing these monthly updates, I'll have to tell you how the rest of the series is going or if I'm on to the second series within this world and how that's going. The next thing I wanted to show you that's kind of new for me, and I'm actually gonna have to move the tripod as I do this because it's on the edge of my table. Let's see if I can make this work with my light and everything. Now you'll get to see what color carpets I have. <laughs> I actually, for the first time, ordered a yarn winder. I'm just gonna scooch it over so that you can see it a little bit better. Um, I got a yarn winder. I have never used one of these. I didn't even know what this was at first. I saw one person using it on YouTube and just decided to get one. So I literally picked the cheapest one I could find on Amazon which in hindsight I think was a mistake. Um, I thought that this was kind of like, well, I just dropped the clamp, so now I have to fix that. Um, I thought that this was kind of like a, not a very well-known thing, and I kind of just got it to play around with it and try it, and then I realized that, oh, no, this is a really popular thing. I just somehow missed out in all my years of yarn crafting. Um, and didn't know that this existed. So I figured I would try it for the first time on camera with you guys because I've watched a couple YouTube videos at this point, which is how I know now that I probably should have taken my time and gotten a better one. I don't know why this isn't working now. Oh, there we go. Also attaching it to the table has proven to be a project all by itself. So there's that. So most of the yarn winders that I saw online were something like this, where it attaches to the table and then you kind of just go from there. Okay, we're going to try that again. I literally had to stop and like move my entire setup so that the this thing was in frame. So it came with directions. So we're going to look at those together. First it says, securely attach your yarn winder to the edge of a counter or table. I think I got that one. Step two says, find the end of your yarn. I'm going to test this out with, let's see. Let's see what I've got. The last two skeins of my Tivoli yarn. Um, I used most of it in a sweater tutorial that's already up. So if you haven't seen my quarantine cardigan video, um, that's what I used this in. There's also like a little tiny ball of my leftovers. I'm hoping that I can get both of these into one cake, but if I can't, that's fine. So let's pull some of that out. Okay, find the end of your yarn, done. Attach the end of your yarn to the notch in the yarn winder. This is the thing I saw on YouTube. Okay, there we go. Then, attach the yarn to the notch in your yarn winder. Okay, so that's this thing. Mine is here. Most of the YouTube videos showed it there, which threw me off a little bit. Then it says, slowly begin winding by rotating the handle. Continue winding always in the same direction slowly. Hold the end of the yarn with one hand. When complete, cut end. Okay, that seems decent. I think we can handle doing that. So let's try this. I'm gonna go this way. probably making my full camera shake because the tripod is right up against the table. Hopefully that's not too annoying.
does get a little weird once you get down to the end and the yarn kind of does the bunchy thing. Okay, that's it. So then I saw other people online kind of tucking the outside end under and then everyone was doing this thing where they like roll up the label and then pop it off and look at that we have a yarn cake that's pretty cool I like yarn cakes better because they sit better on the shelf so that will be nice I probably should have left it on there and tested if I could do the other one but I kind of like the size of the cake for it to sit on the shelf so I'll have to do the other one later um, I'd say this is pretty worthwhile. I got mine for like $17 on Amazon. I literally found the cheapest one I could find. And I did notice that one main difference I've seen is that a lot of them don't have like the sideways cone in the middle. It like sticks up and the cone kind of does like a top spinning thing to make the yarn kind of go back and forth along the cake. This one has this like little thingy on the side that moves back and forth to change the angle that the yarn is winding at. So, I don't know, but either way, that, I think that was pretty darn cool. I will definitely use that again. That was not a stupid purchase. So, thumbs up for this thing. I'm going to pause and move the tripod again, because that was probably really annoying the first time, and I'll see you in a second. All right, that's kind of it as far as stuff I really wanted to update you on today, I think. I feel like I had one more thing. Oh! The other thing that I saw that actually relates back to reading. So I have actually a friend of a friend who set up a game for reading through Facebook. So with this group of friends, we're doing something called Bookopoly. She literally took a Monopoly board and changed the names of all the squares so that they're all prompts to help you choose a book. And that was also what really helped me get back into the habit of reading because it kind of made it fun to roll the dice and pick a new thing every time and not necessarily just take the next book in my stack but actually like intentionally choose something that fit the prompt that was given. So the way it works, you put reading prompts all the way around the board, you roll two dice and whichever one you land on you have to pick a book with that prompt. So some of the prompts were like a book with a blue cover or a book with, or a book with only words on the cover or a book less than 200 pages, a poetry book, um, a book set in outer space, like all sorts of stuff like that. And then whatever you land on, that's how you choose the next book you want to read. So this one, um, I landed on a square that was choose a book where the author is from the country that you are from. So Tamora Pierce is from the US. I am obviously from the US based on the way that I speak. Um, so that's Part of what helped me choose this also because my friend had given me the series and I felt like I should start it. Um, but that has proven to be a very fun little quarantine thing because then people will post what they're reading for each um, stop that they land on so that you can also see their book recommendations and they'll come back on and say if they liked the book or not. So I highly encourage if you have um, friends who are really into reading or even to replace that with any other activity that you can come up with a bunch of prompts for, like, do it. It's been really fun to see what other people are reading through Facebook um, and just kind of nice to have that community. I'm kind of in the weird situation of even though like maybe Safer at Home is ending or easing up, I'm just about to start summer vacation, which is the time frame where I am always kind of on my own for most of the day. Um, obviously I have other friends who are teachers that I sometimes go hang out with, but a lot of times over the summer I kind of have to create my own schedule and I'm working on lesson plans or stuff for the coming year, but there's also a lot of downtime where I need some creative projects or some fun things to do. So this, the group that I am playing Bookopoly with has already said that they're going into the summer for as long as like people need it basically, because even if the safer at home order ends. Um, there are people who still need to self quarantine for various reasons. Um, so I'm kind of happy that I'll still have that going into summer and obviously I will have YouTube with you guys to keep going with. Um, so that'll be fun. I think 
that's the end of my update. So I talked about Pocopoli, I talked about what I'm reading, showed you the yarn winder, showed you the project I'm working on, um, and let me know in the comments if there are any specific craft projects that you want to see in the future. I do crochet, obviously, because those have been my tutorials so far. I do also know how to knit, um, so if you want some knitting-based tutorials, let me know and I'll kind of investigate what I've got and what I know how to do. Um, and I also do a lot of drawing and painting. I actually, usually one of my activities over the summer is that I always draw out my bullet journal for next year, which I know is kind of atypical for people who do bullet journals. Usually they do it on a month by month basis, but I always do mine the summer before. So this summer I'll be doing my 2021 journal. Um, but I am planning on filming those and uploading them at times that like a normal bullet journaler would upload their videos, if that makes sense. So like the January video will come out like end of December, the February video will come out end of January. Um, so that if you want to plan along with me or use my monthly spreads as inspiration, then you can. Um, so I do drawing and painting, knitting and crochet, um, and just kind of a huge variety of projects. So if you have any projects that you want to see, let me know. And I'd be happy to check them out or add them to my list of project ideas. Um, maybe over the summer we can even increase to more than one upload a week instead of just only on Fridays since I'll have more time. And yeah, I hope that you guys like this kind of sit down podcasty style of video. Um, I know most people who do the podcast crafting videos um, show their face in theirs. I don't because I'm a teacher and not that like I care if my students know what I'm crocheting. Um, but it's a little weird to see your teacher on YouTube. So we're going to keep it like this for now um, and hope that that works out. So thanks for sitting and chatting with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one.